Guitar practice session 92924. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need work on, then give a recap so you have an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, verbalize the things that I'm working on, which will get them in my head better, possibly provide information to others who are practicing similar things, possibly also providing for feedback, if people see a better way to do the things that I'm going to be doing here, we will try to provide you with the worksheet. I do think trying to present the information to others, even if no one else is listening, is very useful because it helps you to kind of verbalize and put into words the things that you're trying to learn. So if you want to take the worksheet, don't worry about plagiarism or anything like that and make your own uh, practice sessions or adjust the worksheet, you are welcome to do that. The worksheet will be designed a little bit differently than other worksheets possibly because we're going to try to have everything going the same way, attempting to visualize things as easily as possible from the perspective of ourselves as behind the guitar where we have the top string or low heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling on top and have the same orientation here, low or heavy string on top and then go top to bottom, left to right in the same direction as you are orientated behind the guitar. I'll also flip my guitar around for much of the presentation so that it looks like I'm left-handed so that you can see the guitar line up to your position behind your guitar and to uh, the worksheet here. And I'll try to orientate it so the frets even basically line up and make it as visually easy to see all these things together as possible. Now this time I'm going to be working on what I would call position number four. You might also call it like a C-shaped position from a caged uh, system. You might call it like the Phrygian shape or if it was shape two, it'd be a Lydian shape. We'll talk about those naming conventions. We're going to look at uh, the mode number three, Phrygian mode, which I call absolute mode number three, three, which I'm basing off of the major scale, which I think has benefits, which we will discuss and go over again, trying to get that drilled into our mind. One of the reasons, by the way, I think it's very useful and practical is that when we later go into, and I do this at the end of the practice session, I'm gonna to try to make maybe more of a routine of this. That is that I'm gonna to try to make every kind of combination of, of chords. If we had just three chords where we're gonna start with the first of the, uh, of the scale and then end with the first of the scale. And you can see if I, if I do that, there's a whole lot of combinations. And if we were trying to make music in different uh, modes, then we can use this same worksheet to see all kind of like the different combinations of chords we can put together. And we'd have to know one, what are gonna be the notes. And we're, all, we're looking at all the related modes here. So all the notes are gonna be the same as C major. They're gonna be basically the non sharps and flats. And then the next question of, would be, well, do I make a major chord or a minor chord from it? And that's what this whole idea of the modes helps with, because when I look at the major scale, I know that the one, four, five, I make major chords. I know that the two, three, six, I can make minor chords. But if I reorientate all the relative positions to the Phrygian, and now the Phrygian is the first, how do I know which notes within the scale I can make majors or minors from. Now, since we've been working in the key of C all the time, you probably start to just memorize which ones are gonna be major or minor based on the note. But that's not really what we wanna do. We wanna use the key of C because it's, it's nice for the guitar, C and, and the related modes, uh, but also because we wanna look at the relative position so that when we change it, everything will change relative and we can use this, these same concepts. So that's that's why it's useful for us to basically orientate the modes after the uh, after the major scale, because then if I can say, hey, look, I'm in the Phrygian mode, which I'm going to call mode number three, I can look at the relative positions on the guitar and the relative notes. But then when I play these notes, do I construct a major or minor chord? Well, if I can, if I can convert the numbering system to the major scale, which is what this is based on, then I can figure it out, right? If I can say, well, the Phrygian is mode number three, minus one plus two gives me mode number uh, four, Lydian. Well, I know the fourth of the major scale is a major chord. So I know I would make that F the second 
I can construct that into a major chord. And beyond that, if I know more detail, for example, with the mixolydian, if I know that it's, it's a major mode, but it has a minor seventh in it, then I can go beyond just making a three note chord that will fit in, in the same scale. I can make, I can add the seven, which in this case would have uh, the, the minor seven even though it's a major scale, which you, you would only know if you know the relative modes that you're in, because then you then you know the intervals related to that mode. So so we're not going to get into to the sevenths and so on too much, but I just want to show why this is kind of practical exercise to try to, this is why I'm trying to memorize and say, well, if I was in the Phrygian, how can I convert each note basically to a chord and at least be able to know that I'm going to play a major or minor chord. And then beyond that, once I get that down, how can I then know uh, what other notes I can add, like the seventh, uh, the ninth, the eleventh, which are equivalent to, in essence, the second uh, and the fourth and, and the sixth, right? If, if you look at all the notes. Okay, so that's, so, we, so that's why we're going to that. Uh, and so we go over the intervals. And then uh, we go into the shapes. I'm trying to look at the shapes two different ways. So I'm looking in shape number four, but then I'm further breaking out the shapes into two ways that I've seen popularly people think of them. Normally when people think about the seven note shape, I think most people look at the internal shapes as this box, which I'm calling the house analogy and the double stop. And then we have two of those and then you've got then what I call the flat or the one string, the meat of the hamburger shape. And so, so that's one way I can start to break out. And that's useful again, because if I see this box, for example, I can see then the, the rel I know all the relative modes that are in that box, right? Because it's always going to be the same. Also, if it's a seven note scale with this box, I can then try to try to think about and this, is what I'm trying to get into my routine, converting the seven note to the five note pentatonic, the five note pentatonic being based off the major scale and the minor scale to get to the five note, I would remove these corners of the box, the top left corner and the bottom right corner of the box. I don't want to memorize that I remove the B and the F per se. I want to know that if I change to a different mode, I would still see the box related to the different mode and I would remove the top left and the bottom right of the box, which modal, modal wise would be the Locrian, which would be absolute mode number seven and the Phrygian, which would be uh, the, the absolute mode number, uh, the, the, the Phrygian, is that right? No, not the Phrygian, the Lydian, which would be absolute mode number two, right? So, th so that's the way I, I'm trying to get in my mind that way so that when I shift to like playing in G major and the related modes, I can see it, right? I can, I can, I can still visualize what's happening instead of learning the notes, which means that I can't really shift if I see it in terms of the notes. I'm looking at the relative positions. And then I can also see it, it's popular to see it in terms of the five note pentatonic, which I call the barbell and hamburger shape. Here's the hamburger that's been shifted up. And in that shape, people learn five notes, the pentatonic shape. And then the question is, well, how do I convert the pentatonic to the seven note shape? And we have to know that then you have to add these notes on the outside, which once again will be the, the Lydian mode part, and then the, and, which is this one, and then the, um, the, the, why do I keep the Lydian? The Lydian and the Locrian, the two L ones. I'm getting the two L ones mixed up, the Locrian and the Lydian. So the Lydian and the Locrian. So I'm trying to get that straight in my mind. And then we'll do the intervals like we normally do, counting up from the Phrygian up this way, counting backwards, looking at the intervals. And then, like I say, I'll, I'll start to kind of noodle around with different combinations of chords and just try to play, uh, play them together and see how I might kind of play with an exercise of just narrowing myself down to three chords within a particular mode and then trying to play them in different areas on the fretboard, like in open position or then different shapes in open position, arpeggiate them in open position, then play them in other positions, which will play them in different octaves and invert the chords that are being played and so on, because they'll be played in 
different order of the one, three, five of the chords and so on and so forth. That's what we get into. Continuing on with what I would call shape number four, looking at mode number three, the Phrygian mode. Remembering I'm using an absolute numbering system for the modes based on the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian scale. So if the major or Ionian scale is mode number one, the third of it, third mode, would be the Phrygian. So we're in the Phrygian scale or the Phrygian mode. We have the relative positions on the left-hand side, which will change as we go through the different modes. We then have the notes related to those positions. We have then the modes related to those positions, but the numbering of the modes will be related to the major scale, hopefully helping to orientate us. And I want to just think about the practical uses of this, which I'm trying to kind of get in my mind a little bit more clearly as well. Remembering that these modes also kind of tell us whether or not as we play a scale, we should be playing a major chord or a minor chord. So if we're in the key of a major scale, we tend to say just from a very practical standpoint, if we're playing music, we're going to say, well, if I make kind of some kind of uh, melody out of the notes in the major scale, and then I want to convert them to a chord, which chords should be major and which chords should be minor. And we learned that the one, uh, four, five are the majors. And that means that the two, three, six are minor. And then the seven is that funny uh, diminished one, which often people kind of drop out completely, but does have its uses. Then of course, when we go to other modes, this mode right here that we are in the Phrygian, is a related mode. All the notes are the same. So that's good, but it might be a little bit difficult for us to reorientate saying that now the first of the Phrygian is the E and then think, well, what kind of chord should I construct on that if I'm in the Phrygian mode? Should it be a major or a minor? Well, if you know the Phrygian mode is mode number three related to the major scale and the one and the, the two, three and six are minor, then that tells us that I can, I can then say, well, I'm gonna build a minor chord off of this. So the other way we can think about it, of course, is to convert uh, to the major and try to say, well, the, the thir it's, it's the third relative to the major scale, and then basically think of the major scale. But what we would like to start doing is, is kind of memorizing, well, if I'm playing in Phrygian and I'm playing the one through the seven, I'm not gonna try to re rename the, the relative positions over here, I'm, I'm rather going to try to start to remember whether I construct a major or minor chord based on, on both of, on all of these positions. And then beyond that, if you construct a chord that has more than three notes in it, you add the seven, you add the nine, you add the 11, then to do that, we, ha we really need to know the actual mode because, because the seven, and the nine and the 11 might change depending not only on whether it's a major or a minor, but depending on the mode that we are in. So we might get into, you know, we could talk about that basically later, but just, just to point out that this numbering system is quite practical uh, because again, it'll help us to know if I'm, if I'm playing in this scale, whether or not I'm gonna be building major or minor, which I'm gonna try to build into my routine as we go through our our process up top so we have the phrygian mode it's going to be a minor mode it's the mode i would call like the the most minor mode even more minor than the main minor the ionian or the uh, aeolian because it has a minor second so it's the only one that has only perfects and minors in it and it's kind of a heavy sound i associate it with like metal maybe heart heavy metal music maybe that's not completely fair i don't i'm not totally sure on, but that's what i kind of envision uh, for it because it helps me to just make it a, a mental image of it and then and so so if I compare the minor mode to the minor scale or I mean then which we always do with the minor modes Phrygian is a minor mode we compare it to the main minor scale Aeolian it's only going to have one different interval that different interval is the second which in the main minor Aeolian it's going to be a major second. Here we have the minor second. So we got a perfect first, a minor second, a three note away minor third. We have to have a minor third because it's a minor mode. And then we've got the perfect fourth, five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth, eight note away uh, minor six, and a 10 note away minor seven. So that's going to be our intervals. We're looking at what I would call shape number four, 
remembering that that's a generic name, but I think it's actually a really useful naming convention. It's just basically off of the idea that this shape is the first shape. That means that this shape is going to be the start of the second shape, and this shape then would be the third, and then this is going to be the fourth shape. Now that fourth shape, if you're playing in the key of C, is also the open position shape that we would be playing back here. And if you're like me, a lot of people, although we play all the time in open position, don't really envision the shape a lot in open position. I envision the chords, and then I kind of build my, you know, I noodle around based on where the notes of, you know, of a chord, so I kind of get an idea of the shape, but I'm basically looking usually at this shape, which is, I always thought of kind of a shortcut. I consciously kind of said, well, I don't need to learn the shape back here. I can just learn the next shape, shape number five. Right, and, and then I can just say that the open strings are all good. So I can just, I can always take my finger off. So that means, so to me, when I was learning, I was like, oh, that's a good shortcut, right? Because now I don't really need to learn, like, my fingering from this shape back here because I can just learn this shape and then just know that the open notes are good if I'm playing in, say, the key of, of C, C or A minor, for example. So that, but it's all obviously quite useful to learn the actual shape back here, which is difficult as well because your fingers are different because your fingers are not fingering back here. Therefore, your fingers are shifted up a whole fret. So it's kind of difficult to, to visualize this fingering being actually the same shape as the fingering that we'll do up here. So everything that we do, I might, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go back and forth between these two shapes so I can see them both at the same time but I, I couldn't quite do that last time. So everything I do up top, we should basically try to do back here as well and, and just note to ourselves the difference in the fingering that we're using as we're back here versus kind of up top. So I'll try to work that, that in as well, but I'm gonna try to keep that in mind at least. Now we can also call this uh, a C shape, the shape that we're working on here. We can also call it a C shape. We can call it a C shape based on the caged system because you can see that in open position, it's a little bit more difficult to finger up here. And I should be switching to my electric guitar, right? But it'd be like that, which isn't that difficult to play if I wasn't, you know, hampered by the, the, the I should have a cutout here or something like that. But that's gonna be the, the, the uh, C shape position. Why would I call it that? Because in the cage system, if, if you have the open positions here, we can, we can say that's a three note position, even though I play all five notes, because we're only playing, we're playing repetitive notes, so it's three notes. And remember that the cage system fits beautifully into the pentatonic shapes, because that unique shape fits up here, the C shape fits up in this five note shape, pentatonic, uniquely, and then I can add on top of that the added two notes. So that's the benefit of the caged uh, system. The cons of the, paid, of the cage system are that one big con is that the, the names get a little confusing because you have the name of the shape versus the name of the thing that we are playing, which happens to be the same this time, but oftentimes is not because we're doing a C shape and we're, we would, the major scale would be the C. But it's also kind of confusing because if I'm playing a different mode, like the Phrygian mode, then I have to look at the shape and name it by the related major, right? I'm not naming it by the E first note of the Phrygian, I'm naming it by uh, the, the Ionian, the C, and then I see the shape and build basically on, on top of it. Uh, another naming convention I could use is if this is shape number four, I can name it by the first note in the shape. Now, this is also not perfect, but it works pretty well because I can say, well, the first note in the shape would be the Phrygian. So this shape, if I just started playing from this note, I would be playing in uh, the Phrygian. So I could call it a Phrygian shape. However, we use shape number four for the main Phrygian shape, and we also use it for the main Lydian shape. So, and that's because the second note is the Lydian shape. So if I started this from the second note, it would be in Lydian. And that's why I started to think of this as a naming convention to basically say, note one uh, Phrygian shape. In other words, note one of the shape being Phrygian means that if I start from here, I would be playing in Phrygian and I would call it the note two Lydian shape. Meaning if I started from note two, it's the shape where I start on the second note in the shape. And if I started from there, I'd be playing in Lydian. 
And that sounds a little wonky, but notice that this, the, the same thing happens with the other major, which is going to be uh, the like the C over here, uh, which would be what I would call uh, shape number two, right? If I play shape number two on the C, most people might call that from the cage system like an E major, you know, bar chord shape, even though we're playing a C chord from the cage system. But a lot of people will just call this the C shape because this is the shape you would think about when you're playing a C from the top, but you wouldn't start at the top of the shape if you're looking at all seven notes, because that would be the B, which would actually be the Locrian shape. So once again, this shape kind of shares two different, two different modes, the Locrian mode, which no one really uses as the mode they're playing in typically. So you might not call it the Locrian mode, but I think it's more specific to name the shape note two, uh, it's the it's the it's the note two major shape, meaning it's the shape where the second note in the shape is. Uh, if you played from there, it would be a major, right? That's the that's what I'm thinking. And 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 if and if I name it that way, I could start to go beyond that and say, well, I, I can name the shapes by each. I can name each shape by the seven notes by saying, well, this would be this. In this case, this would be the, the third note mixolydian shape meaning it's the shape where the third note in the shape is mixolydian no one really does that because you know we're going to name it usually based on one of these other conventions but i think it would be useful for me to be able to do that because then i can kind of name each shape by where the where the first note or the first of the of each of the modes is so i've been tinkering around with that idea all right, then when we're in this shape, most people break out the, the chords in the shape because you can't play it just from top to bottom. You could, but uh, it would be better if we can break it out into smaller chunks. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to the top of the shape every time to try to figure out what you should be playing down here because you just know the shape from top to bottom and or bottom to top. So we could, the common conventions, I've seen people break the shape into smaller chunks. Remember that we have a five string instrument, you can think of it with an extra E string. So if you have five strings, then we're gonna say you could break the strings out into a two string, two string, one string pattern, which I'm gonna call the house analogy. And we could break it out into a three string, uh, two string pattern, which I'm gonna call the hamburger analogy. So. And the house analogy, I'm going to say, let's paste this. This is something that people use usually when they're thinking of the guitar in a full seven note scale position, as opposed to a five note pentatonic. So when I use the house analogy, I'm usually thinking, well, I'm looking at all seven notes and then I'm going to reduce two notes in order to get the pentatonic. When I look at the hamburger barbell analogy, then I'm usually thinking pentatonic, five notes, and which two notes would I have to add to get to the seven note mode, right? So for example, if I, if I break it out into my house analogy, here's our double stop house, and then, and then we've got the two note per string hamburger or, or flat. This is the one shape that's the same in both of the two uh, uh, ways of breaking out the, 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 the three string, two string and two string, two string, one string. And then this is the, the, the house double stop. And then it repeats up here. This is the bottom of the house, uh, double stop the box, double stop. And, okay. So that's useful to see it that way, because you, you're also going to, you often going to see this box, this box, the, the, the modes that are in this box never change. So if I memorize where the modes are in this box, meaning here it's a major box behind it's the Locrian, uh, the Lydian is up front major mode, and then the Phrygian, then every time I see that box, I can locate, I can locate that, right? Uh, uh, the other way people see it oftentimes is with the pentatonic scale. So and I call that the barbell hamburger. So here's the barbell. So if I start up top, the barbell looks like this, we only play the outer notes, if we're going to a five note pentatonic. And then we would have to add the inner notes if we want to convert the pentatonic to the major scale. And then here's the here's the hamburger bit of that. So the hamburger is shifted up bottom bun because of the fault line. So the hamburger would look like this, right? But then it's been shifted up because of the fault line. And uh, and so those are the two ways to kind of envision it. 
And of course, with the hamburger, I'd have to add the two notes, which are out here on the hamburger. And then on the barbell, the two notes inside would have to be added. With regards to the seven note uh, house analogy, if I had my house and my double stop, the two notes that are removed from the house would be the B and the F. So we would only play the upper, the C, the upper right, and the lower uh, left corners of the house. And, and that's the way we can convert from a seven note scale down to a five note pentatonic. Remembering that the five note pentatonic is most useful when we're playing in the major Ionian mode or the Aeolian. It's not gonna be as useful for the other modes because the two notes that we remove, the B and the F in this case, or in terms of the, the modes, it's like the Lydian mode note and the, and the Locrian mode note, those are gonna be important to construct the major parts of our, of our shape. So for example, like here, I'm removing, if I remove the two notes, it would be this one, let's make this one yellow. It's a, that one would be removed. And then the Locrian would be removed. Duh, duh. And so if I'm playing in the Phrygian, so the F isn't in the triad to make a triad, but the F is the important second note. That's the interval that's really important. If you wanna make it sound like Phrygian, you're gonna to have to add the F because that has that minor second. And then the B down here is the fifth which is typically pretty important because that's part of the triad that we would create in Phrygian. So if I see the guitar from a pentatonic standpoint, then that's fine. I could totally do that and then just add the other two notes in from the hamburger. If I see it in the house shape, then I'm probably just going to keep those the whole house. I'm not going to remove the two bits to take it down to a from a seven note to a five note. OK, that was a long explanation for crying out loud. All right, where are my roots? My roots are gonna be uh, at the at the E, which is in the in the in the house analogy. You can see the whole box down here. So it's actually the bottom of the box that you see here. So in the house analogy, it's it's in the basement. So it's the Phrygian, it's the one minor shape that's in the C major's house in the basement. Uh, and just rocking out because it's Phrygian. I, I imagine a metal player uh, rocking out and just making noise in the basement. And then we're gonna say then uh, the other side is gonna be down here. Also, of course, uh, in the box, there's gonna be our octave. Same thing, of course, over here, it would be the open string and then here. So clearly we wouldn't be playing the open string. We'd be playing it uh, down here and boom. Okay, so then if I was to if I was to look at the whole steps and half steps, hold on a second. Uh, oh no. There. Okay. If I look at the whole steps and half steps, we can say from here, you've got the first to the second, boom, boom, is the half step. So that's the funny step. That's the difference, a different out of sync step to the related uh, minor scale, which results in the minor second instead of a major second, which is the funny interval. And then we have to get back to normal, which means we have another out of sync step going from the second to the third, uh, which is gonna be a whole step. And that gets us back into our normal interval. So the rest of it is gonna be the same as a minor scale. So going from three to four, three to four pinky to pointer is a whole step going from four to five is going to be four to five a whole step going from five to six five to six is a, a half step and then going from six to seven six to seven uh, pinky to pointer is a whole step and then of course seven back home to the one or eight is a whole step noting that with the minors, we always have that whole step going home, back to the home, which means I don't have that nice leading tone, which we do on the majors, which is something that we can always add if we wanna give a pull. So that's something that we can play with outside of the key to pull us back home when we wanna have a resolve feel going back home. Okay, so where are the half steps? 
Well, notice I'm starting at the bottom of the box here. I'm starting at the bottom of the box. That means that the first half step is right in the box. The other half step is going to be on the bottom of the box. So I have to get back to the box. Then there's two notes in between one box and the other. So it goes one to two is a half step. Uh, two to three is a whole step. Three to four is a whole step. Four to five is a whole step. And then there, now we're on the top of the box. Five to six is a half step. So the, the half steps are from one to two and then uh, four to five. One to two, four to five. I'm sorry, not one to two, four to five. One to two, five to six. One to two, five to six. So one to two, five to six, half steps. All right, bottom of the box, top of the box. One to two, five to six. Okay, I have it. All right, let's do our intervals then. We're gonna go from the first to the second of uh, the Phrygian, mode number three, the Phrygian. So we're gonna go from the first to the second. Uh, that's gonna be a one note away a minor second, which is strange. It's usually a major second, even with the minor modes. So it's a one note away major second. What's the diff What's the inverse? 12 minus one, which is an 11 note away major seven. So if I go from E to F, one note away minor second if i go from f to e then therefore 11 note away major seven how do i know that because if i go to an f down here and count up 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 we get back to an e so if we imagine them on a circle we can go one way which would give us a one note away and the other way would give us an 11 note away all right, and then we also know that the second of the Phrygian, if we do our little experiment, now re remember the importance of this is that we're trying to get to the point where I, can, where I can basically recognize the relative positions in the major, which will help me to determine if I'm playing in Phrygian, which chords, which of these notes should I build a major and a minor triad. And beyond that, I would, I'd like to know even past that which of these notes would would have a a like a like a like a major seven or a minor seven or a major nine or a minor nine which we can determine not just by whether it's the one relative one th you know one three four or one four five of the major or major scales but the rest of them will the rest of the notes the intervals the seven the nine the eleven will be dependent on the mode so, so if we start to be able to see what modes that we're in, that will help us to construct the proper chord, starting with hopefully just knowing whether the third is major or minor, helping us with the triad, and then going beyond that, looking at the different intervals in the modes, helping us to construct the proper 7, 9, 11, 13 of, of uh, the chords based on that, right? So in any case that's the that's where that's why i think it's practical so if i say so i'm trying to say if if i say the absolute number is the third of the phrygian we know that the ionian is mode number one so that means that the third of the ionian is the phrygian and how do i get to the third it's two steps up so I, if i start at one i go step one step two two steps to get to three Therefore, the formula is three minus two, I mean, sorry, three minus one is two, plus whatever I'm on in terms of relative positions, which is two, gives me to absolute mode number four. Absolute no mode number four is Lydian. Now, if I compare, I know the Lydian by the worksheet here is a major mode, which means I would build a major scale from it uh, because it has an uppercase Roman numeral. But I also know just by the number that if that's the numbering system related to the major, I know that the one, four, five are the major chords, have a major third, versus the two, three, and six, which have minors. So, so just by that number, I can say, oh, oh, that, that means that on the second of the Phrygian, I would be building a major chord. So when I see this F, I'd say, if I'm playing in Phrygian and I go to the second and I'm like, I want to convert this to a triad, what do I do? Do I have a minor third or a major third? Well, you're going to have a major third because it's a be, 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 because the second of the Phrygian 
is relative mode number four, right? It's a it's a major mode. It has a major. So that's the idea. So that's what I want to kind of start to to learn uh, here. And then once we get that down, maybe we can do that practically by just kind of randomly picking uh, numbers and uh, or different combinations of chords and try to convert them to uh, to play them in Phrygian, right? Which means to, to in order to do that, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to say, well, which note am I playing in Phrygian? And then do I can do I play a major or a minor triad? And then again, beyond that, we can start thinking, well, is there a major or minor seven? Is there a major or minor nine? How do I know that? You know that by the modes, right? right? So and and but because they and then and they have the different intervals, right? That make it okay. Any case, so now we're going to go to the next one. Uh, which is going to be the third. So we'll move on, move it on down to the third. The third of a Phrygian, which is a minor mode, must be a minor third away, three note away, minor third, which we can see right here, the inverse 12 minus three, which would be nine, nine note away, major six. So if I see this shape, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, that's a three note away, uh, minor third, inverse, which would be G to A, nine note away, major six. I could see that up here. I wouldn't be fingering it. It would be right here, right? So most most likely I would be playing it not with my pinky, but with maybe my uh, my ring, depending on, on what I'm doing, or maybe I'm up here and playing it this way, but it would be uh, from the open to here, three note away, minor third, and then if I go from G back, nine note away, major uh, six, all right? And then we know that the third of mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus one, which is two, plus the relative position three gives us five. Mode number five is the Mixolydian, which Mixolydian is like the bluesy mode that has that uh, minor seven to it. And so, so, and and again, if I saw, so if I say if I'm building a chord off of that G in Phrygian, I'm building a chord off of the third of Phrygian, do I make it a major triad or a minor triad? I make it a major uh, triad because uh, because it's the fifth, it's the relative fifth mode to the major scale and the one, four, five of the major scale makes the major chord. So if I'm playing Phrygian, the third is major because it's equivalent to mode number five or the fifth of the major scale and it's the Mixolydian. And beyond that, I can say, well, I know the fifth has that flat seven uh, in it. So it's going. So if I was to add the, if I was to add the seventh, it's going to have the. Do, it's the one that has that dominant seven. I think it's, it's called right. It's got the flat seven, the minor seven, as opposed to the major seven, which I wouldn't know if I just memorized that the one four five of the majors is a major chord versus a minor chord. I have to know that it's the Mixolydian. It's the five, which has the distinctive flat seven to know that, which is different than, than, the, than the, the one and the four, which don't have a flat seven. And therefore, if I add the seven, if I want to be in the same key and not playing like blues, that's all flat sevens, which is kind of wonky, which is cool, but wonky, the wonk is cool, then I'd have to know the mode, right? So it's practical. It's practical. I'm not saying I can do it perfectly, but... The, the, it's not just me walking out on like my accounting thing okay there's there's there is utility i'm not saying i i'm able to use that utility perfectly but i can envision that if i knew that all that stuff then that would be cool it, useful cool not just like weird like your nerd cool all right let's go to the next one so we're going to the fourth uh, the fourth of Phrygian is a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because there's five notes between the strings and the inverse would be 12 minus five, which would be seven, seven note away. Therefore, that would be a, uh, a, a seven note away perfect fifth. So when I've, whenever I see them stacked on top of each other, that's a five note away perfect fourth. The inverse, seven note away perfect fifth. Obviously in open position, I just wouldn't play anything. They're stacked on top of each other because of the net. That, duh, duh, that would be a, uh, a five note away perfect fourth, bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth. All right, the fourth of mode number three, 
Phrygian is 3 minus 1 is 2 plus the relative position 4, 4, 5, 6. That's the mode number 6, which is Aeolian, meaning it's the 6th of the major. And the 6th of the major is a minor mode because the 1, 4, 5 are major and the 2, 3, and 6 are minor. And therefore, if I'm on the Phrygian and playing the 4th, which is going to be this A, do I build a major chord or a minor chord from it? Well, I build a minor chord because it's the Aeolian mode or it's the sixth. It, it, it's the sixth, which is basically like the Aeolian mode. So I can build a minor chord from it, which is the minor mode. And by the way, where does the, I'm, I'm, where does the, the minor live in my analogy here? It's, it's not in the house because it's the minor mode and this is like the major house even though Phrygian lives in the basement here. It's in the double stop part of the house analogy. Uh, so there's, it, there's where it is there in terms of, the, and, the, and it would not be removed if I went, if I, I wouldn't remove it in order to get to a pentatonic. So it would, it would be there for the pentatonic as well as the seven note. And then if I look at my, uh, my, uh, barbell and hamburger uh, analogy, then the major would be at the bottom of the barbell. So it's on the, the barbell on the left of the barbell are the heavy hitters for the minors, which is the uh, Aeolian minor mode on bottom, and then the even heavier Phrygian because it has that a uh, minor second. The Dorian, which is a cool mode, has been kicked out because it's got too much major in it, right? It's got two major intervals. Whereas these two are the heavy hitters for the minors because they're only they have less minor intervals, and then the and then on the right side you've got the heavy hitters for the majors, which is of course C major, and then the mixolydian lydian's been kicked out as a major mode. It's in the middle in the handle. That's the one that would be removed if uh, you went from a seven note to a five note pentatonic. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. We're going to go to the uh, the fifth of uh, the fifth of mode number three Phrygian, which is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I count up, it'd be five, six, seven. Inverse twelve minus seven is five. That would be a five note away perfect fourth. So if I see that, I'm seeing power chord, top to bottom, seven note away perfect fifth. Inverse therefore. Five note away, perfect fourth. The perfects are inverts of each other. If I saw that in open position, I have the open A here. Therefore, I would just have to play this one underneath it to get the power chord. Perfect fifth. And then uh, perfect fourth, bottom to top. And uh, we know that we know that the uh, uh, we know that. Hold on a second. I was. Wait, I went from the A, I got discombobulated. I'm not going from the A over here, I'm going from the E, I'm up here. Sorry about that, I got mixed up. It's still a perfect fifth, but we're going from the E to uh, the B. So, so E to the B, perfect fifth. And if I played that in open position, it'd be an open E. Okay, hopefully that didn't mess people up too horribly bad. Uh, hopefully I, I don't know. And now, now, I'm, now I'm like worried that I messed every I messed everyone up. Everyone totally their music is going to be all messed up now. But the fifth of mode number three Phrygian is uh, is going to be it's a practice session. Okay, it's a practice session. You mess up some. Anyway, it's going to be three minus one is two plus five is seven. That gives us the Locrian mode. Locrian mode the seventh of like the related major, I know is the funny diminished one, which I can see here by the minor third indicated by lower Roman case numeral and the dot is what I'm using to represent. It has a flat fifth uh, to it. So if I went to the fifth of the Phrygian and said, well, what chord am I gonna play off of that uh, fifth? Well, it would, be a, it would be a diminished, meaning it's gonna have a minor third but it, and then it's going to have a, a flat fifth so that would you got to be careful with that chord maybe if you don't want the flat fifth you just play the minor third i don't know it depends what you want to do the flat fifth is going to give you a little bit more tension uh, on it where does the locrian live in the in the seven note house analogy 
it's in the house, it's in the attic behind the, behind the C, and that's the one that would be removed if you're going from the seven note shape to a five note pentatonic, because we would only play the outside of the, the, the top of the house and the inside of the bottom of the house, or the right of the top of the house and the left of the bottom of the house, and then the type of top of the right and then bottom of the left. If you look at the five note pentatonic, then the, the Locrian on the barbell is going to be on the inside of the barbell, which is not what you would normally play if you played five note pentatonic and would have to add converting the five notes to the seven note uh, of the scale. All right, and then let's go to the next one. We're going to the sixth of the Phrygian. The sixth of the Phrygian is a uh an eight note away minor six eight note away minor six how do i know that because i can say this is five six seven eight and uh five six seven eight and inverse 12 minus eight which be a four note away major third so if i see that shape top to bottom eight note away minor six inverse bottom to top four note away uh major third if I saw it over here, so we have the open E, see if I can get it right this time, and then the C is right there. So, eighth note away, minor six, bottom to top, uh, would be a four note away, major third. Okay? And then, what is the, the, the sixth of mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus one is two, plus relative position six is eight, uh, there's only seven modes, so eight minus seven is one. Mode number one, Ionian, otherwise known as the major uh, major scale. So therefore, if I'm looking at the sixth of the Phrygian, do I play a major or minor chord from it? Well, I'm going to play a major because it, it would be the relative position one of the major scale, and the one, four, five are the majors, uh, the major chords of the major scale right so and i can also of course see that because it's a uppercase roman numeral in the worksheet the major where does it live in the house analogy it's on the top right of the house and then in the barbell hamburger analogy it's at the bottom right of the barbell on the the weights of the barbell on the right hand side are where the weights of the major are the majors on the bottom and then above above it the second most popular major scale of the mixolydian uh, and then we're going to go to the next one which is going to be the seventh the seventh of mode number three uh mixolydian is going to be a, a 10 note away minor seven as you would expect considering it's a minor mode how do i know that because if i count down it would be five ten and inverse 12 minus 10 is two two note away uh, major second so if i see that shape i'm like all right that's a 10 note away minor seven inverse therefore is going to be a uh wait this is a 10 note away minor seven inverse is a two note away uh, major second the inverse of a minor is typically a major open position i'll just play the open e to the d 10 note away minor seven inverse d to e be a two note away major second okay and the seventh of mode number three phrygian is three minus one is two plus seven seven eight nine only seven modes nine minus seven is two that gives me the dorian therefore if i'm looking at that d if i'm looking at the seventh of the phrygian do i make a major chord or a minor chord from it i'm going to make a minor chord because the relative mode is two, meaning its relative position to the major scale is the second, and we know the two, three, and six of the majors make a minor mode. So also note that though, if, if you take it further than that, the Dorian has that distinctive characteristic of the sixth being a major six. So if we, if we extend that, you'd say, okay, it's just like the minors if I build the chord, it has a minor seven, but but if I if I go to uh, the six, like the 13, right, we could say that that's where it's going to differ. So when you start building longer chords or chords with more than just the one, three, five, also adding the equivalent of the two, uh, 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 
the four and the six, the two, the four and the six, which is basically the seven, nine, 13, right? Then you would, then, then you have to know what the distinctive interval is. And in the Dorian, it's the sixth, which has a major six instead of the normal minor six. And so you could start to see how that's useful, right? Because then you could start to build the chord based on the, on the Dorian shape that would still be in the key that you're in. <laughs> So then we're going to go, okay, so then uh, the Dorian, where does it live? In the house analogy, it's not in the house. It's in the double stop. So it's it's here and on the bottom of the double stop here. And then when you go to the other double stop, sometimes it's at the top over here. And uh, in the five note pentatonic analogy, it's in the barbell. You can see uh, it's in the hamburger and it encompasses the hamburger. I'm going over here to the hamburger because there's a shift down here. So that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to see. And then of course we get back to the, the octave. All right, I think I'm trying to do too many things at one time, but I'm, I think it's, I'm starting to get it. I just have to get it down. I'll go back the other way possibly, unless I'm too tired, but let's first try a joke here. All right, here's my joke. Practice session on the joke. I'm starting to get suspicious of the term meteoric rise have you ever heard that term meteoric rise i'm suspicious because i keep hearing the the mainstream of sewage media use the phrase right and anytime you hear a bunch of manipulative colluding deconstructivists use the same phrase over and over again one starts to suspect there's funny business going on which isn't actually funny right they're like they're, like they're like Due to the stellar performance of the current administration, consumer confidence is in the economy has taken a meteoric rise. And it's like, wait a second, hold on now. Something ain't right here. A meteoric rise of consumer confidence in the economy because of the policies of the administration. That's that does that. First of all, when you when you think of meteors, Aren't, aren't, aren't you more concerned about them falling than rising? Possibly threatening the existence of the dinosaurs, which, which, which would certainly kill off like Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, and Chuck Schumer, right? The meteors fall for crying out loud. I mean, I mean, I mean an asteroid or a meteor moves because of gravity, right? That's what makes the meteor move, it's gravity. And when things move due to gravity, don't we say that they're they're in a state of free fall not rise they're not in a state of free rise they're falling you know rocket okay rocket ships rise precisely because they go the opposite way of gravity that's what it that's kind of a lot of times what we mean it seems like when we say it's rising instead of falling like gra gravity's trying to push the rocket ship down and the rocket's like i don't think so I'm going the other way using rocket thrust power, baby. It's pure rocket thrust that it goes up. Honestly, if the, like, like if the media said that consumer confidence is rising like an Elon Musk SpaceX rocket taken off, then it would be more clear and we'd be able to, and, and then we'd be able to say, hey, wait a second, you're totally lying. That's a, that's a flat out lie. But when they, when they say the term meteoric rise, you got to think you got to think those sneaky sewage stream monsters are trying some kind of lawyery word game trick, right? It sounds like it's just what they do with these changing the words thing and you're like there's got to be some kind of there's there's some reason like that they're doing this, right? There's some kind of word game. Like like when you call them out on the lies, I'm guarantee you they're, they're going to be like, "Yeah, but but the meteors actually fall." So like we didn't technically lie when, when we said that there was a meteoric rise in consumer con and it's like, yeah, but that's not what you were implying when you said there was a meteoric rise. You, were, you weren't saying, hey, there's a meteoric rise, which actually means that stuff is falling. Now that we sue you, you're, you're telling, it's, I'm telling you, those sneaky deconstructivist colluding word manipulating sons of, I mean, like you, you can take you can take your meteor and shove it okay i don't care which direction you want to you want to call the shove you could you can call it up you can call it down whatever 
just shove it, dang it. I'll tell you what, had enough of these word games. Plus, when I hear when I hear meteoric, my mind does not always envision like an actual meteor, right? I, I, I tend to think of like medium or the middle. Uh, you know, making meteoric sound like the mean or like the average, right? So the a meteor, so so like if some proud parent says their kids' grades took a meteoric rise, I'm I'm not thinking of like a perfect straight A report card. I'm thinking like of a move from below average to like D's and F's to like a meteoric rise to the mean, you know, or something like that, which would be like an like a average C average report card. That's what it seems like to mean. Anyways, that's just me. I don't know if anyone else has got suspicious of this term, but I'm, I'm, I just want to set out the warnings. It sounds like another one of those word games that they've been playing on me. I don't, I'm not falling for it, man. I'm not falling for it. And if I did fall for it, they probably said I had a meteoric rise instead of a fall, but, but I fell, you know, like I, Anyway, whatever, dude. Let's go the other way. We're gonna go then backwards comparing to this E. So let's go, let's try to do this a little bit faster this time. Could you pick up the speed? You're kind of slacking. So we're gonna go from this E back to here. So if we go back from the eight to the seven, we know that the seventh of the Phrygian has a 10 note away minor seven. How do I know that? because the distance between these two notes from D to E would be a two note away, which would be a major second, and therefore the inverse would be 10 minus two, which would be, uh, I mean, 12 minus two, which would be a 10 note away minor seven. So if I go the normal way from D to E, that would be a two note away major second, and therefore the inverse E to D would be a 10 note away minor seven. All right, let's just, run through let's go down to the to and i know that, just, let's just list it this time i know that the seventh w of the phrygian is a my would be a, would be a minor mode or a minor chord would be constructed i'm just going to list that now i won't go through the math of it i'm just going to try to say okay i know that the seventh is a minor because the seventh of the phrygian is mode two dorian all right so then i'm going to go back and say let's go back to the uh to the sixth so the sixth of the sixth of uh mode number three phrygian has an eight note away uh minor uh six now wait a sec why am i what am, what's going on here boom boom it would be going back to the six all right there it is so that would be an eight note away minor six how do i know that because if i went from the c down like i normally would it'd be five and then back would be uh, four. So that shape would be from top to bottom, a four note away major third. Therefore the inverse would be 12 minus four, which is gonna be an eight note away minor six going from bottom to the top. And then let's go, and I know that the sixth of mode number three Phrygian is a major mode, the Ionian mode. I'd build a major chord off of the sixth of the Phrygian. Going back to the fifth of the Phrygian is gonna be the fifth of the Phrygian has a normal seven note away perfect fifth. I know that because if I went from the B to the E, that would be a five note away perfect fourth, inverse 12 minus five, seven note away perfect fifth. So if I see that shape from top to bottom, whoop, wait a sec, it would be a five note away perfect fourth from bottom to top, seven note away perfect fifth therefore we know that the fifth of mode number three phrygian is a uh, diminished mode which means we would make a diminished chord because it's the sick or it's the seventh mode or locrian mode so if i go back to the uh fourth of mode number three phrygian we get to the fourth which is a five note away perfect fourth how do i know that because if i count up from the a be five, six, seven, seven, that way, perfect fifth. That's my power chord uh, shape. Inverse, therefore, 12 minus seven is a five, that way, perfect fourth. So if I measure this from top to bottom, power chord, seven, that way, perfect fifth. From bottom to top, therefore, five, note away, perfect fourth. And let's go back then to, I know also that the fourth of mode number three, Phrygian, would be a minor chord constructed because it's the sixth or Aeolian uh, mode. 
So going back to the the third, the third, we're gonna go, okay, the third is up here. Uh, it's kind of hard to reach the third up there on this guitar. It wouldn't be if I had my electric, but no, I'm too lazy to pull that out. I don't, and plus it's kind of hard to edit because sometimes it gets messed up with it. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that right now. So this is going to be <clears throat> the third of the Phrygian is a three note away minor third. How do I know that? Because if I count it up this way, it would be five, ten, nine, nine note away major six. So if I played from top to bottom this shape, that shape looks like a nine note away major six. And therefore the inverse is a three note away minor third. Let's go back to the second. Let's go back to the second. And we're going to go to do it back to the second here. Wait, I was there, right? I hope I was there. Back to the second is here. And that the second is going to be a two note away minor uh, uh, second. How do I know that? Uh, no, it's a one note away minor second. How do I, how do I know that? Because if I count from the F, it would be 5, 10, 11. So that shape is an 11 note away major 7. And therefore the inverse, 2 note away minor 2nd. All right, and that, make, that brings us back home. Now I should go from this E to this E. But I'm getting a little tired, and I was going to try to do uh, some... I'm, I'm slowing up because I'm trying to do too much. But I was going to kind of mess with this over here and thinking, okay, what if I go back to this idea, I'm gonna hide some cells, hide. And and I was thinking that uh, this is just a list of all the combinations. So this is the same idea I had up top if I was in like the major scale. And I was thinking, all right, like if I was to make a chord to make this practical, and to play with it. And I, I don't do this all the time. So I'm, this is kind of, again, a practice session. But I was like, if I was just to play something, normally we just kind of say, well, I can play anything within like the major scale. And I know that the one, four, five is major and the two, three, six is minor and then the diminished. So I can just kind of noodle around with any combination and come up with like a song or something like that, right? Or some something at least sounds good. But uh, I, again, I don't think we really realize all the different combinations, especially if we add like different rhythms and whatnot to it. So I think it would actually be easier. I thought it might be useful then to create a list of all possible combinations using the C as the one, because that makes it sound like it's in the major mode. Uh, so I'm going to imagine that we start with a C and then we end with a C. So we'd play like these three chords. And then again, we can come up with different how fast we play it, uh, are we going to arpeggiate it versus are we going to play it up here, invert and higher pitches and whatnot. So again, even with just like the three chords, there's an infinite amount of things you can do once you, you know, once we think about all these different things you can do as you play the notes in terms of how you're going to play it uh, and so on and so forth. So then, it, so then I was thinking that it, it might be useful to just list these out and then, uh, and then experiment with them more systematically. So I can just say, okay, what can I do with just, like if I just picked one of these or just went through them and say, all right, I'm just gonna pick that one and say, I'm gonna play the one, three, two. And then I have to convert that to the major and play a one, three, two. So one's gonna be a C, a three is gonna be, I can see here an E and the three is a minor cause it's the third minor. And then the two is a minor, which is a D minor. And then that goes back to the one. So one is a, is a C. And then to the three, D e minor. To the two, D e minor. And then back to the C. And so then, so then I can kind of, and then I can, I can arpeggiate it or something. Try to do some different. I can do all downstrokes. I could try to do hammer ons.
I can try to play it up somewhere else from a C, C to an E minor to a D minor. Wait, that's not an E minor. <laughs> C. Do a different shape like your C, E minor, C minor, C. You know, I could start to to kind of noodle around with different shapes. Now, I can use the same set of of all these different combos with the Phrygian, right? So I can go to the Phrygian. And then that's when this becomes kind of practical for me to say, okay, if I'm playing in the Phrygian, I know all the notes are the same because I'm playing E Phrygian, which has the related major of a C. So we're still playing just all the notes without, without the sharps and flats. So you might say, well, I can just kind of think of myself in C, right? But I can't really, I can't really do that. I mean, I could, I could say, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to imagine that I'm in the key of C playing around the third, which is the E, but when when I try to come up with with like playing with other people, they're gonna say it's the one like if they're playing this, it's the one three two of the Phrygian now. So I have to convert the one to to what it is on the Phrygian, which of course if I'm playing E Phrygian, the one would be the E. I have to get to the notes, and then the three would be well E F G, and then the two is gonna be E F. So I can get to the notes there. But then I have to think, well, is it going to be major or minor, at least getting the triad, which I'd like to start to memorize on the different modes in terms of the relative positions, which relative positions are major and minor. If it was the major, the one, four, five are major, the two, three, six, minor, seven uh, is the diminished. But if I'm in the Phrygian, you can see, well, then the one is minor, the two, three are uh, major, the four five uh, are are minor, and then the six is major, which is kind of interesting because the Phrygian has once again the one four five. Uh, wait a sec, the the five is the Locrian, so that's a little wonky. So it's it's the one four seven of the Phrygian, which are the minor, and then the five is where you got that wonky uh, uh, diminished. So that be so the way to get there is I can say well I can say the if we do our math again, I could say, well, the third, the third is going to be uh, the th the mode number three minus one is two plus three is five gives us to the fifth of the related major. And I know in the related major, the one, four, five are majors. Therefore, I would build a major triad around it, which would have a major third. And if I want to go beyond that, I know it's actually the Mixolydian mode which has the distinctive factor of the seventh being flat. So I could also then, if I wanted to add the seventh and be in the same key, I would actually add the, 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 the minor seven, even though it's a major mode, right? And that's how I would know beyond the third. But so, so that's, so if I was to start, if I was to see this and say, the one is now the, the E, so we're playing in E minor, Let's see if I can do this. Three would be then the G, G major, and then the two would be uh, the Lydian, which is the F major. Back to the one E minor. It sound a little bit heavier of a mood because we're in the the Phrygian's a minor, especially with the E minor. So one E minor. E minor, play the G up here, G major. Try to you know move it 
up here, so E minor, like this way. And then I play the G. shape e, let's play E minor G G So we can let's try another one. If I just changed one note on that, I can say, okay, let's try this one and noodle around with that. This would be the same one, three, but then uh, the four. So I can be like, okay. So if the one is the E now, the two is, I mean, the three is the G again, G major, but now the four, the four is gonna be, uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> the A, A minor. So the fourth of the Phrygian is is going to be here, the A. And then the question is, is it major or minor? Well, it's it's a minor mode because it's it's the uh, Aeolian, which is the minor mode. So now I'm going to say, all right, now we've got, it'll sound a little bit heavier maybe because it's now got two minors in it instead of uh, two minors and a major instead of uh, one major and two minor, so we start with a heavy E, we lighten it up again with a, with a G, sounds a little bit more hopeful, but then we go back to the A minor, and back to the heavy E. Heavy as the E, still a little heavy. Back to the E minor. Now this is when I could play it like this, the E like just like with these two. with it a little bit right and so we could then say okay let's try the next one let's try a different one where we go like a one three seven uh let's try that let's just mess around with that what does that look like in phrygian oh wait that's not what i wanted to do control z i want to make it this color So if I did that, the one is an E minor. The three, uh, the three is once again uh, a G. But then the seven is gonna be the D Dorian. So now we're still just replacing the seven with the other minor, uh, which is the Dorian. So the seven's down here. The seventh of the Phrygian is a minor and it's the Dorian, it's the, the seventh of the Phrygian is 
mode number two, Dorian, a minor mode, minor pentatonic would be added then, right? So we're gonna say, all right, so if I was B. The mixolydian, which has uh, the seven, uh, the, the the seven in it, so I could play that like with that because it's the fifth, which I, now I can go past the third and say, well, now it has that seven, and I'm still in the same key, so I could go like. That's enough of that. I'm kind of messing around with that one. Let's do one without the G in it. So we'll say, like, uh, I'm trying to stay away from the fifth, which is the Locrian, right? So let's say we do this one. So now I can go like, okay. This would be the one is an E. The four, now the four of mode number three, Phrygian is a minor mode, the Aeolian, so A minor. And then the sixth is, the sixth of the Phrygian is the second mode or the Dorian mode. So that would be once again a D. Or not the sixth, no, I'm on, yeah, the sixth is the Ionian or major. All right, so let's try that again. You got E minor, the one, the four is gonna be A minor. The six is going to be the C. Back to the E. So E. A minor. C. Back to the E minor. E minor.
So I just think that playing with those can be kind of fun to like, I, I think the idea of that is that, again, my eye thinking is that people get overwhelmed by just like, oh, there's, I'm just gonna noodle around with it. Poor, I do that all the time, right? And then I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, right? So if you, <laughs> if you actually write down all the combinations and then restrict yourself to like playing three chord, you know, th these three notes or whatever. And then of course we can add to that. You can play four or whatever like that. But I think this is like three is a good place to start uh, because it, even with just three, like I say, three chords, you have all of these combinations per mode, <laughs> right? And that's with, with me starting and ending on the same note you know, if there's three to four, four chords, three chords, plus you start and end on the same chord is what I'm thinking. Anyway.